that pastor is a vessel, and I thank you that he speaks to each and every one of us in our hearts and our spirits, and that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost comes down and just changes our lives and, and leaves us refreshed, and we, we leave here changed. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.
give it all to him. Amen? Yeah. You know, we need to turn my mic on. I need to turn my mic on. Hallelujah. We need to stay committed to him. Yeah. Sold out 100%. Can you yeah. say amen? Yeah. Never, never, never pull him back. Glory to God. Now just look, look at somebody else and say, you're blessed. You're blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then you can be seated. So glad to see you this morning. Somebody say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. How often? All the time. But just like he's good all the time, he's Lord all the time. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So glad you're here today and trust you're, you're uh, walking in the fullness of God's plan for your life. And um, if not, we know how to get you there. Can you say amen? Well, uh, come back on Wednesday night and join us for something new. Because we finished up Authority on Wednesday night. Uh, it did go longer than 10 weeks. But not much longer. It went about 12 Hallelujah. I think we had one break in there, uh, something different. Maybe I was out of town or something. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, we finished this past Wednesday, and uh, we're excited about what we learned. And uh, if you didn't get to be there for it, go online. All of our stuff's out there on the... Um, does, our, does our stuff make it to the website, too? Yeah. The website, if you go to media, and then go to live Facebook recordings. Okay. So there you go. So if you want to catch up something from the past and don't... Either know how to find it on Facebook or whatever, you can go to fvc.org, go to media, then go down on the tabs, look for live Facebook feeds, and then I have all the services that we'll put out there on Facebook has been imported into our website. Uh, so they're out there. Amen. And so that if you just needed like maybe a different way to find it or not, not dealing with the social media or, um, you know, some people at work, they can't get on social media, but they can get on the Internet, you know. So uh, and I can understand why they don't want you on social media. Social media gets you get you in trouble. <laughs> How many found that out? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, I addressed some things this past Wednesday night. You probably want to go look at it if you weren't here about uh, our Christian walk and uh, how we need to make sure that we're Christians even when we're um, doing other things in life. Cooler online. Yeah. What was that? Even when we're being cooler online. <laughs> Even when being cool online, yeah, we still need to be Jesus-like. Amen. I, I've been amazed. I, I watch people that, that went to the same Bible school I went to, and they'll get on social media and say stuff and, and go after people with such a whatever. You're, you're like, did you go to the same school I went to? You know, I mean, they can be mean. Yeah, that mess with their mess with their grace narrative. They'll they'll go out and hang you. You know that that. Um, God loves you just like you are thing, unless you don't agree with them. Then they'll, then they'll go out there and, I mean, they will fillet you. You'll be fillet mignon when they're done with you. So now, we, we need to be Jesus-like all the time. At work, at home, in public, on social media, not on social media. You know, you, you are bearers of the image of Christ. And for many people, you're the only Jesus they'll ever see. Gandhi said, maybe we've all heard of Gandhi, said he would have been a Christian. He actually he was he went looking for Christians because he had read the Bible and wanted to become a Christian, and then he met some. Wow. And it turned him away from God, turned him away from Jesus. Because the people didn't live like the what the Bible said. That kept him from becoming a Christian. Yeah, what an indictment. We can't be about being um, us and going to heaven. We need to be about heaven in us to a world that's lost. Amen. Amen. So that we, we represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So uh, I said some things. on. I got on a little bit of a soapbox on Wednesday night. About this talk. So praise God. Amen. We, we as a church... I've got some sermon. I got some sermons coming up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I got some stuff. I mean, I'm just the Lord spoke to me a day before yesterday and gave me something. Hallelujah. Um, specific. And we're not even done with this one. He already talked about something new. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I was just I'm just thinking about the church and the state of the church that he's beginning to talk to me. Hallelujah. You know, he knows what we're thinking too. Yeah. You can just be thinking about stuff, he'll start talking to you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Glory to God. He knows what's going on in that head of yours. Some people are going, oh my. 
Hallelujah. Just because you didn't say it don't mean he don't know it. Amen. Praise God. So good to have all y'all this morning. Our Facebook friends, we're glad to have y'all this morning. God bless you for being with us today. I uh, trust you'll be ministered to and blessed. This time we're going to receive our Sunday morning time and offering. If you need an offering on the Lord, raise your hand. Ushers are in the, um, um, in the aisle side. I was waiting to assist you if you need it. If you're giving electronically through Square Cash and or through PayPal, uh, you can go ahead and uh, send your time now. And I know some of you got them in before you got to church this morning. Well, bless you. Hallelujah. Um, I love it. We've got some people that, you know, they, they get some money outside church and the tithe comes in before they can, you know, even get it to the bank. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Bless you. You're a blessing. Glory to God. Amen. You know, Jesus said in the word of God that we're to give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men will give it to your bosom. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, also says this in the word of God, bring the tithe and offering into the storehouse and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you'll not have room enough to receive. Praise be to God. I said, praise be to God. Can you say amen? We're so excited about what God does in our life. Amen. We don't give to get. We give because we love God. We tithe because God told us to. And I honor him. I want to obey him. I don't give out of legalistic, but my obedience, you know, my obedience to the Father is based in my love for the Father. Yes. Not by constraint. As a matter of fact, well, I guess it is by constraint because the love of God constrains us. Did you know that? It's not legalistic. I'm not doing it because I don't want to go to hell. I do it because I love him. And he's asked me to do it. He said, do this. And because, he did it, because I love him, I want to honor his request or his commands or his demands. Amen. See, we'll get on this side and say, well, concerning my promises, demand ye me or command ye me. You know, I'm going to tell God, give me this. We get all, we get all cocky about demands then that he's got to do what we say do. But when it comes to us doing what he says do, oh, I'm under grace. It doesn't matter. I question your love for the Father. And you need to question it too. Because you should do, want to do everything he says because you love him. Amen? Glory to God. And grace being under grace has nothing to do with loving the Father in obedience. I, I under, don't, 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 go, don't, don't send me those stupid posts if you're watching. About grace has everything to do with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying that grace does not take away our responsibility and the heart of our believer to honor God and love him. It doesn't do it for us. It gave us the position so we could, but we still have to do it. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Great did not say grace will do it for you. Amen. So we give and we tithe because we love God and he's commanded us in his word to do so. And as a matter of fact, the master himself is in heaven right now receiving and there people here Bible says in Hebrews that here men receive tithes there he receiveth yes. them the master himself is about to receive it yes. can you say amen? amen well it's going into a church you know what turn off your stupid head amen. and follow your heart amen. your head can get you in trouble Amen. And usually it's because it's carnal and hadn't been renewed to the word of God and you want to do stuff, don't want to do stuff because it's not convenient or it's not what you want to do. And you've listened to people on television and on CNN and all that stuff and the world's opinion of the church. Money grubbing dogs and money stealing preachers and all that stuff. Let's give because we love God. Let's tie it because his command, he commands us to and we love God. Yes. Let the love of God motivate what we do. Faith works by love. Yes. Your love for the Father. Yes. Let's be like Mary and not like Judas. Yes. She broke the ointment and washed his feet. And Judas sat over there all judgmental and said, that could have been given. Who is this woman who does this? That was worth 300 pence. It could have been given to the poor. You know, who, you know what the Bible says about Judas because he said that? He was a thief. He said, Mary, too much is forgiven. 
They, they are forgiven much, love much. Amen? Yeah. He's forgiven us everything. We should love more than we should love him more than Mary could even think about. Because yeah. yeah. we're born of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father, we thank you for the time of the night. Bless the people now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just go ahead and receive that. Uh, Lord, we thank you that you receive it. We thank you the time that now is brought into the storehouse uh, physically and electronically. Can you say amen? I, I really appreciate uh, Nathan and Dick um, working under the circumstances of a, of a setup and break down church where they don't get together. They got together a couple times in the past couple months, but that's been it. And, the, you know, they just it's hard to get together when you don't have a regular place to meet and have stuff set up. It's, it's a coordination issue. Okay? We, we're thankful um, that they've been able to do what they do. And, and, and Millie, this morning, I, I was amazed that they pulled that off that quick with that, that rhythm and all of the stuff that went into it. It's like, that, that was perfect, you know? You know, that was, that was, that was, uh, that was rocking. Yeah. Children's Church Preschool, you guys are out of here. The rest of you go ahead and get your Bibles opened up. First John chapter 4, 5, verse 4. As we jump in right, we're going to just jump dead in on this. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. And um, how many are glad we got the keyboards back here? Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's, there's going to be more stuff done with that. Obviously, as we get more and more uh, uh, opportunities, they're going to get more and more stuff done with keyboards. And we can actually leave other musicians to come. That would be good. Amen? Amen. One of the things I want to do, as soon as uh, all the school gets out there, but we've got some freedom, is go dumpster diving <laughs> at the uh, storage unit and find our projector yeah. and um, put it on a stand so we can shoot up and, and turn, turn this room around. And we'll cover the, the mirrors Hallelujah. and we'll shut it, shoot it up on the top of the wall up there, the, the words. And uh, we're going to we, we, uh, purchase, go ahead and purchase uh, some type of backdrop. We, we just haven't got the design yet that we want to use. And uh, we got stands for it. And, um, but we, you know, like some kind of logo that we can put behind us, you know, instead of that. Anyway, uh, but we'll need some type of a, a black drapery that we can hang across these mirrors to kind of block them out. Uh, even with a, a backdrop in front of it, okay? And because uh, we don't want you looking at yourself, we'll have, we'll have people in there doing this. <laughs> then I'll just have to preach on vanity. Anyway, all right, praise God. First John chapter 5, verse 4 says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We began this a few weeks ago talking about, the, you know, how many have ever been in a place in life, been, you know, walking in life, where your faith seemed weak and your victory lost. And we could all probably raise our hand on that unless you got saved last 15 minutes. Yes. There are going to be times in your walk with the Lord, there are going to be times in your walk as a Christian that, you know, it's going to look like faith is weak and victory is lost. And, you, you know, I mean, you know, like one preacher said one time, you know, uh, he, he got had opportunities in his life where he felt like he didn't want even saved. Mm. He, you can't go by your feelings, right. you know. I remember uh, uh, Brother Hagin talking about one time, you know, we get down to the altar. You know, growing up in Pentecostal churches, we always went to the altar every Sunday night and every Wednesday night. That's what you did, you know. And um, it was a good thing because I tell you what, you go to the altar, you know, a lot of times you'll get stuff taken care of that um, you're asking other people to pray about. You're asking somebody for counsel and whatever. You get down to the altar, God will tell you. Yeah. There's nothing better. Now, thank God for good counsel. Thank God for people who, who can minister by the wisdom of the Holy Ghost, who have wisdom in those things of the Spirit. But there's nothing that will affect your life as much as God telling you yeah. in your own heart. Yeah. I know, uh, looking at our, our time since we've been pastoring here in Greensboro, there are times I would have packed up and hit beef, I mean, hit beef boogie and split. Made like a horse and hit the trail. Are you here? I mean, there are times that we would have just packed it in and been gone, long gone, just because of the struggles of, of, of resistance that, that come against us. But look, God spoke to me supernaturally. I know. I mean, it, wasn't, it was one of those things that you know, God spoke to me, and I'm like, I can't get away from that. I can't. No matter, any time the devil comes and says, you need to pack it up. I even had a friend one time, minister friend, said, man, if I were in your case, I'd have been gone. I'd leave. You know, some of the things that have gone on in the past and some of the, some of the things that come against our family, you know, uh, and we don't want to rehearse all that for the sake of, you know, you know, woe is me. I'm just saying we've gone through some stuff. Right. But you know what? You will go through things. That's right. 
All who live godly will. That's what the scripture says. Amen. And But you just want to pack it in. But God spoke. And because God spoke, and that's, you know what? And the same God that said, go there and do this, can tell me, pack it up and leave. As a matter of fact, there's been occasion I've asked him, hey, yeah, yeah, if you, what do you think? I, I got this idea. Let's go. Silent as the lamb before the shearer. I'm not a, I mean, not a, not a peep. So when God speaks to your heart and God gives you things, you know, it's awesome. And it helps save the course. Amen. But we can get to the places in our life that, that you know, life is a struggle. And, and we feel like God's not there. He's right there, baby. Amen. I'll never leave you. I'm the friend that sits closer than a brother. I will never leave you nor forsake you, the Lord says. Can you say amen? amen. And he's, lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the earth. Now, that, that actual phrase there in the Greek, now not end of the earth, but actually uh, in Greek it says end of the age. He's with us right up to the end, right up to the, the and, see, and then we get ratcheted out of here. <clears throat> so you won't need to wonder if he's there because you'll be, able to, you'll be in the spirit realm and you'll see. Right, you'll know even as you're known. We'll see him and we'll be like he is. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. And so we began this talking about the different things of what to do with faith seems weak and victory lost. The first one was recognize the source, you know, the problem and the answer. Be sure the promises of God cover the things you ask for. Number three, be sure you're not living in sin. That was, that was the most exciting sermon we had in this whole series. Amen. Then uh, be sure no doubt or unbelief is permitted in your life. And then last week we covered uh, sincerely desire the benefit. Today we're going to talk about this. And, and listen, some of these will begin to overlap a little bit, but that's okay. All right. Let's get into this morning. Uh, now that it's... Uh, wow. How many don't mind staying till three? <laughs> Well, I want you to know ha, that we're just a getting a stuff head. Ha. I just need somebody up here on the organ to get, get, get the hammer beat three Leslie sound going on. All right. In case you couldn't hear that, Jeff said that's going to make us an African American church if we stayed three. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Uh, we're talking about this morning. You know, ask in faith, nothing wavering. Mm -hmm. For he that wavereth is like the wave of a sea driven with the wind and tossed. See, a lot of times faith seems weak and victory lost because we've been wavering. Amen. We haven't been steadfast. You know, we're to remain steadfast. The word steadfast over in James in the Greek is hupomino. And it means to bear up under. Okay? Amen. means to, to, to bear up under. Amen. We're like the support to a bridge. You've got to bear up under the weight. That's right. Amen? Now, the good thing about it is, Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When those things come, we can rest in Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen? With the fact and the confidence that he's there, he's there with us, he's carrying that with us as we stand in strength and the strength of God. Paul wrote to the church in one of the most misunderstood passages in the Bible about his thorn in the flesh. And he said, moreover, I will rejoice in my infirmities. That means weaknesses. doesn't mean sicknesses. Amen. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Glory to, God. Glory to God. We want the power of Christ to rest upon me. Why? For when I'm weak, then am I strong. How am I strong when I'm weak? Because the power of Christ comes on me. Amen. And so we can't waver with the thought that I'm not going to make it, that I'm failing, that I can't get through. This is too big. I mean, you know, God can't even deal with this one. <laughs> Hello. No. You can't afford to waver. The Bible says the wavering man is a two-minded man or a double-minded man. How are you wavering? You waver between yes and no. You waver between getting the answer and not getting the answer. You waver in that place of insta with instability. Hello. 
Now, some of y'all remember watching in high school the video of the bridge up in um, Washington State, I believe it was, where the, wind, where, they, where the engineers designed it bad and the wind started to blow and it started doing like this a little bit. You know, they thought they designed it to handle, you know, so, but the wind, that bridge, and it, it began to pick up the vibrations and the twisting and it got to the point that it just kept getting exacerbated. And finally the bridge just was doing like this and then it just collapsed. How many remember that? Yeah. Some of y'all never saw that. No. I don't know where it is. Go look it up on Facebook. I'm sure it's out there. You know? That's what happens in your life when you begin to waver. You begin to rock. And it just, it, it's, it's, um, you've been on those, those rides that, 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 that do like, zoom, 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 zoom. And then finally, and finally it'll go all the way over. Okay? Then Jeff hurls. That's not my confession. I'm not going to hurl. The double-minded man is, he goes over here, and he comes over here, and he comes over here, and he goes over here. Eventually, if you keep that up, you're going to turn upside down. And your world's going to get turned upside down. And you're going to get out of balance, and you'll get out of it. You, we have to be steadfast. We have to remain locked and focused on Jesus. Amen? Amen. We have to ask for things in faith and we can't waver. We cannot be going back and forth between two opinions. How long halt you between two opinions? Amen? What did Joshua tell him? Choose you this day, life or death, blessing or cursing. Therefore, choose life. Can you say amen? amen. Therefore, choose life. The Word of God tells you there are always two choices. There's a choice of faith and there's a choice of unbelief. And when you make the choice of faith, you can't waver with the unbelief. Amen. Yeah. You can't come in with plan B just in case faith don't work. Yeah. You got to get on track, glory to God. So he that wavereth, amen, is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed. Romans 4, 16 through 22 says, Therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise uh, might be sure to all the seed. Not to only that which is of the law. That means not only that which is the seed of God through the Levitical priesthood. Amen. Are you here? That's what that's referring to. But also to that which is the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Before him whom we believed, even God who quickeneth the dead that makes alive. King Jimmy for make alive the dead. And calls those things which be not as though they were who against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now most translations actually say he considered his own body. Hallelujah. And what the King James was attempting to do was attempting to relay the idea that even in the midst or even in the face of adverse or opposing circumstances, he did not let that overrule what God had said. Okay? So, um, but we, we'll go, I don't consider, I consider not, I consider not. No, I look at the circumstances and I look at what God's word says and God's word supersedes it. Amen. I don't see. We a lot of people what they did in the modern day uh, charismatic faith circles, of which I am and which we are. So you know, it's all right to blow the whistle on ourselves. Amen. Amen. And you know, and admit that some people have some good points about us. Like we're cray cray sometimes. I'm not sick. Your eyes are bloodshot. Your nose is running. You got 107 degree temperature. You should be in the hospital. Amen. Are you here? And you're walking around saying, I'm not sick. No, that's not what the Bible says. It says, by his stripes ye were healed. Amen. So I believe that I received my healing according to the word of God. I declare that I'm the healed of the Lord because God's word healed. And because I believe God's word. I'm, I'm my body's lining up with the word of God. I'm not denying what's really there. That's like, that's like going out you know, and, and writing a check on your bank account because you, you, know, your you, you got your bank statement. It said zero. Actually, some of you said overdrawn. Hello. And you're going out and going to write another check because you, you're not moved by what you see. 
I'm not considering my bank account. Your bank account ain't got no money in it, honey. You can't write a faith check. It ain't even a faith check. It's a lie. Because you said when you wrote that check, I have money in that bank to cover that. Now, if you use your debit card, it won't let you do it. Hello. It'll shut you down. But when you write a check and call that a faith check. Now, listen, everybody's had a check bounce. I mean, I've, you know, you've written a check and sometimes it's embarrassing. People write a check for the church and it bounces. Hello? I've even written checks to our church and it bounced. Because we thought we had money, you know, we thought money was going in on a certain date and it, 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 it cleared before that money went in or something or something, something weird happened. And you, you're going, I bounced a check to my own church. <laughs> Yeah, glory to God. I didn't go, I don't receive that in Jesus. I called and found out what happened. You know? And, and for some reason, something got held or whatever, and it didn't clear or whatever in time. And, you know, those things happen. I'm not, I'm not. But for you to go out there knowingly and call it faith, I'm believing God, there'll be money in my account to cover that before that check goes through. No. Based on what? Yeah, it's nothing to write a check post day and say, uh, Pastor, I'm going to have the money in by Friday, so don't cash this before Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know, I know that. Okay, that's different. But writing it under the guise that, you know, money's going to get there before it clears. Mm -hmm. And you're acting like it's not empty. Okay? You, acting like you're not sick. Now, this is, let me, let me, let me Clarify, because we, we faith people get on certain things and we miss the other parts. It's not that we are, we are denying what's going on. It is that we're accepting a higher authority, which is God's word, that it supersedes what's going on. Now here Abraham says, who calls those things would be not as though they were. He, he was speaking into existence what wasn't there. He wasn't denying what was there. That's the difference. We got into this thing of, I'm not sick. I'm not sick. And people listen to you going, they are nutbags. I thought the Pentecostals were bad. Didn't the Charismatics and Board of Faith people came along? They made the Pentecostals look like the first church of the frozen chosen. Come on now. We did such crazy stuff under the guise of certain things. Of not wavering. No. I'm not wavering because the circumstances are contrary to what the Word of God says. I'm standing in faith that the Word of God manifests and overcomes that. Amen. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. That which I'm speaking overcomes. Fight the good fight of faith. What am I doing? And my faith is overcoming the circumstances of life and I can't waver because the circumstances of life look like they have the upper hand. Hello? Are you here or are you going home? If you watch the first game of the NBA playoffs on Thursday night, LeBron scored 51. And they still lost. And they, they still lost. Or as Brown calls him, Lebanon James. <laughs> yeah, that Lebanon James. Yeah. Brown, anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lost. And they still lost. <laughs> and Golden State kept staying there and kept staying. Because they, they, they actually believed they, could, they were going to win. It's a team sport. It's a team sport. And on Thursday night, LeBron put the eye back in team. <laughs> There's a post right there for some guy on it. It says, uh, I, pers I put the eye back in team. Oh, Lord. Yeah. We can't waver when the circumstances of life are opposing our faith. Because they will. Jesus got to the boat, told the disciples, let us go over to the other side. Amen? And in the middle of the night, while he's asleep back at the back of the boat, a storm came up. And the disciples got afraid. Now, they had seen Jesus do all kinds of stuff, and he had just said, let us go over to the other side. Amen. And they come back to him and go, Master, carest thou not that we perish? 
Because he's asleep. Why was he asleep? Because he said, let us go over to the other side. He had spoken other side. It didn't matter what happened in between. If he had to float over without a boat, are you here? He'd have just slept on the way until he got over there. But their first words were, what, they wavered. Why? Because they said, they weren't in faith. How do you know? Because they said, carest thou not that we perish. They're wavering on the word of Jesus versus the circumstances that have come up. And the circumstances said, I'm greater than the words of the master. I'm greater than faith. I'm taking you down. And they got so caught up with they said, we're going to perish. Jesus cares though not that we perish. He wakes up out of a good sleep. Probably was enjoying the rocking. You know? Gently being rocked. Maybe not so gently being rocked. It was a bad storm apparently. These, these professional fishermen were uptight. They thought they were going to drown. Gets up and rebukes the storm and the wind. Turns around and looks at him. They probably like whip puppy dogs over there. They probably go, ah, why is it that you doubt it? Oh, ye of little faith. You wavered. The storm came to rob them of the word that Jesus gave them, and they wavered on the word. We can't afford to waver on the word. When we go to the word of God and speak something, Satan's going to come. Honey, Satan's going to come. Pal, I don't want to include them in. Pal, Satan's going to come. He's going to come to rob you of the faith in that word so that it doesn't produce. Now, what is the, what is the parable of the sower? Immediately, Satan cometh to steal the word sown in their heart. He's going to come after it. Why? Because he doesn't want you to get to where you're bringing forth fruit. He doesn't want you to get where you're producing. Why? Because every time you produce, you get stronger. Every time your faith comes to full fruition and the answers manifest and you overcame all the attacks of the devil, you're stronger. And you experience that exceeding, growing faith. Glory to God. So Satan comes with things to make you waver. So that's why the word of God says, let him ask in faith nothing wavering. The wavering will undermine you. It will rob you of the very thing that you've asked God for. Now I know James says, hey man, let wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, the, the context there was asked for wisdom, but the, the principle there is when you ask in faith, you can't waver. Because he that wavered, see that, that, that principle went off over here. He, he was, he's making a statement, if you need wisdom, ask God. Now ask him in faith and don't waver, because when you waver, you're like a double-minded man, unstable in all your ways. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Amen. Go to James chapter 1. Look at it. Amen. Right there in the first few verses of James chapter 1. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Y'all here, you go home. Amen. And, uh, you know, that's not, none of that was in my notes. <laughs> Shocker. I'm in total shock. Aren't you? <laughs> that none of those things were in my notes. Okay. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. The double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. That's why Satan wants you to waver, because he wants you unstable. Right. Now, as I said before, you know, the Greek word for uh, st uh, stable is steadfast. This really means, it's unstable, means not steadfast, or unsteadfast. And notice he said that when you waver in faith, you're unsteadfast in all your ways. Hello. It will begin to affect everything you do in life when your faith becomes unstable. Amen. How can that be? Because the word of God says that the just shall live by 
faith. Amen. When you're living in an unstable environment, it affects everything. Amen. I know, I, I heard that. Lord, give us a spiritual WD-40 for those rusty gears because they just started cranking up out there. The double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The man who is not acting in faith and staying steadfast in faith is unstable, not steadfast in all his ways. And you're not, you don't even think you're going to receive anything of the Lord. Now, this isn't to put pressure on you, you know, oh my God, I'm not going to get anything from God. It's just so you can address where you are and make the adjustments where you are and make sure you stay in the Word of God, you stay steadfast, you, you don't let the circumstances control you. I'll tell you, um, one, of the, one of the interesting things is, you know, about this walk with my, with my toe where they went to cut it off and, and, and it's still down there, healed in Jesus' name. Glory to God. No, not, that's not, not, not a faith confession or believing, it's healed. I mean, it's, 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 it's there, it's... It's not infected. It's not coming off. It's, it's normal. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. I got flesh all down there. Amen. You know? I don't have a big gash or anything. And there's no opening. It's, it's healed. Amen. Glory to God. Before, but when I would look at it before, we take pictures every day. Jamie, Jamie uh, um, documented every single night when we redressed it. It was pictures were taken of it to see how it was doing. You know, to, to monitor how it was doing. It didn't bother me a bit in the world looking at him when that was going on. Mm -hmm. I wasn't moved by it. Good. It just, I'm, I'm healed in Jesus' name. It, now when I go back and look at it, I almost get sick. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, it about turns my stomach. Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh that is disgusting. Big gash there, big hook, a hole all the way down in there. I mean, you know, at the hospital, the black dead tissue, you know, and the, the, the oozing and the pussy of the, this disgust, the flesh, what they call a sloth, mm -hmm. where the flesh is just is, is so uh, disintegrating that it's like mushy stuff. That is, yeah. I mean, it was it was disgusting. <laughs> and I would just look at it. And go, oh, okay, okay, it's getting better. Yeah. Now I look at it. And go, oh! <laughs> I don't even want to look at it anymore because it was disgusting. But you know what? I was so full of faith that I knew that God had healed my toe. And that it was just, it was, I'm going to see it get better every day. Getting me people say, how you doing? I'm getting better. It's getting heat better every single day. Every single day is getting better. And yet, why? Because I had already received my healing in Jesus' name. Yep. Amen. But the thing is, I couldn't waver. Now, I remember when I went to the doctor one time, and I came back the next week, next two weeks later, and the, and the measurements were, he said, well, it's really about the same. Every other time it had been like cut in half in the size of the opening. You know, this time, ah, I'm going, yeah, he couldn't really say there was any different. Satan came, see, you, you've reached that point. Mm -hmm. You've reached the point that it's not going to finish. Nope. It's healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And the next time we went back, it had dropped again, significantly again. And just about three or four more weeks after that, or three weeks after that, it was closed up. He, then that's what he said, you know, I'm going to call that heal. We cannot be waverers. When the storms of life come to steal the word of the Lord, and 90, let me say this, the vast majority of the word of the Lord is going to be this Bible. The other will line up with this Bible. Amen. It's not going to be something different. It's not going to be some revelation. That you're out beyond that thing. Well, go ahead, Debbie, because you're going to drown out there. Yeah. Are you here? When you're out beyond the Word of God, you're going to drown. Yeah. Hello? Amen. Peter walked on the Word of the Lord, but when the circumstances talked louder than the Word of God, he sank. Amen? Yeah. Master, if that be thee, bid me to come to thee. Come. Well, Jesus couldn't say it's not me, or he couldn't say, well, it's me, but don't come. He said, if it's you, call me. Come on. Really? Peter got out and walked on the water. Yep. But when they saw the wind and they saw the waves, he began to sink. He got, his, he got what? He got double-minded. He got blown from the word to the circumstances. And in that place of, of looking at the circumstances, he began to sink. He was going to drown. But Jesus took him by the hand and 
drug him back to the boat. <laughs> kind of like, you know, hanged on to the ski rope when he went forward. You know, and the driver's got it cranked. He's looking ahead, pushing it as hard as it'll go to get you up. And you're about there going, <laughs> you know, and somebody in the back of the boat is going, let go of the road! Look, 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 look. Have you ever done that? Anybody ever been water skiing? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Let go of the rope, stupid. Hello? You know, because, you, know, you know, especially if you're trying to come up slalom, come up on one, and you come up and you're spending so much time pulling and trying to get up that you'll go forward sometime. You don't keep your balance back far enough. And when you go forward, the ski goes out the back, you're in this way, the boat's going that way, wide open. Boom! Jesus didn't drag Peter back to the boat. <laughs> they went back walking on the water. When he, got re, when he got reconnected to the word, he walked on the water back. Are you here? So when your faith seems weak and your victory lost, and it's because you've been wavering, reconnect to the word. Jesus is the word. Amen. He is the Logos. Amen? And when you reconnect to the word, you'll walk on the water again. And you'll walk in victory again. You'll walk in overcoming again. Can you say amen? Because now you've gotten back to where you need to be. You've stopped wavering. You've got, to, you got back connected to the word. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Glory be to God. So we cannot, we cannot afford to waver. Um, 1 Timothy 2.8 says, I therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Let Hebrews 11.6. Faith is, is, without faith it's impossible to please him. For they that come unto God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. We have to pursue God. When the storms of life come, you can't go and say, Master, don't you care that I perish? And that's how a lot of Christians are. When things aren't working out, we go whining and, 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 and bawling to God about why He hadn't done something about it. And, you know, with the attitude, you don't care. When he did, he does care. He's already told you the answer ahead of time. Yeah. Let us go to the other side. Let us go to victory. Let us go to fulfillment of what I promised. Glory to God. Let us walk in all that I've given thee. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? Yeah. Peter did not have to sink. He could have walked all the way to Jesus and all the way back with Jesus without ever going under. But the lesson's in there. You get your eyes on the circumstances. And that's where the double-mindedness comes in. When you begin to allow the circumstances to speak louder in your life than what God's Word says. When they begin to have more control of what you think than what the Word of God says. You see, when you can look at the circumstances and say, well, that's a bad storm. But, here's where but's really good. God said this. Amen. And I believe God. Now remember Paul on the boat when they were they were in that bad state, and um, you know they're all there, they're, they're you know they're ready to throw people over because you know this kind of stuff. I mean they're they're doing you know they're so sailors were so superstitious. They still are. They still are superstitious. You know, they got tails of mermaids and stuff. There ain't no half women fish floating around out there. Huh? Pigs and roosters. Pigs and roosters. Interesting. I'm glad to know that. Okay. Just learned something I didn't need to know. Anyway. But, you know, uh, and Paul comes up and says, Sirs, the angel of the Lord stood by me tonight and said that I not, will not lose any, any men, only the ship. And he says this. And he's sitting there looking at the storm. They are, they're, they're, they're on a rock. They can't get off the rock. The, the, the waves are going to crush, crush the ship eventually. Mm -hmm. Enough time is just going to cause it to disintegrate. And he says, the angel of the Lord stood by me and I said that, that he was spared. He's given him, given Paul, the whole crew. Yes. Yes. And here's, his, here's what he says after he finishes that statement to the whole crew. Wherefore, brethren, I believe God. Standing in the midst of this storm. Yes. 
knowing what's going to happen to the boat, seeing the fear in all those guys' eyes, I believe God. In the midst of the circumstance, he did not waver. He said, I believe God. Are you here? You go home. He couldn't waver in that moment. He couldn't waver in that hour. The circumstances were loud. The circumstances were big. They were talking really loud. Are you here? You go home. And I know you heard that. With or without a microphone, I know you heard that. I don't doubt if people can hear me. Are y'all here? You go home. I mean, Nate's out there at the counter. He hears me. Isn't that right, Nate? Yep, he thumbs up. Not my son, Nate. The other Nate. We have to be so sold out on our faith that it speaks louder than any circumstance, any time, any situation, anywhere. We let the word of God declare that this is the answer. And we follow that out to the end, glory to God. And we tell the circumstances just like Jonah did. I will not observe these lying vanities. Because when we look at it, we say, no, I considered it. And I considered it, and I considered the word. I've chosen the word, and now anything contrary is a lying vanity. Because God's word is true. Yes. God's word is a final authority. Amen. I'm not denying the existence of the circumstance. I'm denying or, or I'm rejecting the outcome of the circumstance. Are you here? See, the circumstance around the boat was real. The outcome of the circumstance was contrary to what Jesus said. Let us go to the other side. Right. Mm -hmm. And I reject the statement that the circumstance says to me when I'm believing God in a different place. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. The circumstance said you're going to perish. Jesus said we're going to the other side. That circumstance is real. But I'm not going to accept its declaration that you're going to perish. See, it came for a reason. And in your walk with God, and you're believing God for things, and you're declaring things with God, circumstances are going to come that are going to give you a different... Half God said, doesn't he really know? It's all... This, this thing hadn't changed since Adam and Eve. Half God really said, or half God said, he knows... That when you eat that fruit, you're not going to die. You're going to open your eyes and be able to die. You're going to do a good deed. You're going to be like God's. Mm -hmm. The thing was, they were already like God. Yes. That's true. Yes. Knowing good and evil was not a qualification for being like God. Yeah. The circumstance declared when, when Satan showed up. You're going to be greater than God or you're going to be like God. When the outcome was wrong, when the out, it was after the outcome of a lie. Because you see, God, knowing what evil was, did not know evil. Mm -hmm. It wasn't part of him. Hello? Mm -hmm. You're here, you go home. It wasn't part of him. So he did not know evil in the sense he experienced evil. Satan wanted them to experience evil. The lie was they were already like God. They were created in his likeness, in his image, after his kind. Amen. Satan always questions the authority and the outcome of God's word. And brings circumstances that give you an alternate outcome. And it always leads to defeat. We can't waver. 
when the circumstances of life come and array themselves against what God said, we have to stay with the Word. And we have to stay with God. And we have to go, No! I've already looked at you. And I weighed what you said against what God said. And wherefore, I believe God. Therefore, you are a lying vanity. Come to rob me of what God said. He said, let us go to the other side. We're going to the other side. Amen. And if you tear the boat up and sink the boat, we're just going to walk on the water with Jesus. Amen. All the way over. Amen. 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 Now, he rebuked the storm for them, not for himself. Think about it. He, didn't, he was asleep. He didn't need to rebuke the storm for him. He did it because they were getting, they got off. And he had to bring them back. Hello? Amen. See, when we get to where Jesus is, we start walking like Jesus walked, and we're acting like Jesus acted. We spend so much time rebuking storms and trying to pull the storms out instead of just walking through it in faith Amen. with the answer. I've already got the answer. That storm's just a lie. Yeah. Hello? We want to have our casting out, binding, loosening, all kinds of services where we're just doing it. But Brother Hagin said, he, he took a church one time and started, you know, and uh, he wanted to really do something to help the people. So he started uh, loosening services. He did that for about three months. And everybody in the church came and got prayed on that, on that certain night of the week. And they prayed for him. They all got loosed. Well, they kind of, kind of ran out of people to get loosed. And so he started having set free services. The same book that much got loose for the previous three months came out and started getting, loose, getting set free in the set and free services. Yeah. And then he had another kind of service. You know? And finally he went going fast. Because after about three rounds he figured out that they won't get loose, set free or anything. Yeah. And then that's when he began to get a revelation that you know, uh, there, there's the, you're, you're, you're getting loose, you're getting set free but you're not really getting changed. And too often times in our circles, because we, we got power and we got authority and we're going to bind the devil and all this kind of stuff, we don't walk the walk of faith steadfastly. And we go, we're out running around binding the devil, throwing anointing oil all over the place. I mean, you know, some of us, I mean, our floors are so greasy from oil being splattered everywhere that you can go skating in there. There's nothing wrong with anointing oil in the right application. But folks, when you're walking by faith, the storms don't bother you. They're just lying vanities. And you get, are you, are you all getting what I'm saying? Yeah. We want to run out and start binding and everything. I mean, I'm every binding the heavens, bound the earth, loose the heavens, loose the earth. You know, I get that. But you know, we spend so much time dealing with the storm. And instead of just knowing we're going through the storm, coming out victorious on the other side, it doesn't matter what that storm says. Amen. Because I've already spoken what God's word says about it. Hello? There's a storm. Oh, what a big deal. You know what I mean? I'll lay down and listen to the thunder. And go to sleep. Put me a tin roof up there and listen to the rain. And hit on the roof. Glory to God. You don't know how many times I wish I could go to an old tobacco barn and on the, on the side shed where they got the bells at the back up under there and go lay up on top of it in the middle of a thunderstorm. That's some good sleeping. And cured tobacco smells really good. I mean, just yeah, honestly, it does. It has a, has a really uh, pleasant aroma. Now, smoking it's another thing, but this it cured, it smells great. Hey, you know, I've worked, I pulled out many a barn in my day. You know? We got to get, we can sleep through the storm without being affected by the storm. Or cause the, the storm causes us to be awakened and startled and fearful and go, oh my God, what are we going to do? Hello? For I got the word. I've already got the word. Amen. The word says, let's go to the other side. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for this. We thank you that we can live by faith and not waver. We don't, we're not going to be double-minded. We're going to receive the Lord because we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. And the storms of life will not have authority. and will not have voice that supersedes what you said. But we'll walk according to the living word of God. And we'll take the commands of God, the word of God. And we'll see them through to the end in victory, full of faith. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Trust you got something out of that. Next week we'll pick up and then I'm talking about not letting a thought of the contrary come in. Like I said, these things begin to overlap a little bit, but we're trying to make sure we address things so that people don't uh, get off. At this time, we're going to receive the Lord's table. So if you'll go ahead and stand up and get in the position where the ushers can get to you. And we'll call the children's church over and uh, bring, them, bring everybody in. We're going to receive the Lord's table. Glory to God. Those of you at home, we, uh, uh, we are receiving the table of the Lord this morning. Glory to God, the, the communion, uh, our liturgical churches refer to as the, the Eucharist or the Holy Eucharist, uh, which is, you know, all those terms are, are, are referring to the same thing, you know, that we celebrate the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus, and until he come again, we look, we point to his death till he come. Can you say amen? amen. Glory to God. I know those are those that accept, you know, and say that, you know, this actually becomes the body and the blood of Jesus. It's representative. It's not literal. And, um. Glory to God. So communion table doesn't save you. Hello. But it does uh, remind us. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance. Jesus gave us a very instruction. Do this in remembrance of me. Not that it is me and saves you. It's in remembrance of me. What I've done for you.